This is one of the most overkill Z690 boards on the market. Today we're taking a bit of a look at the Gigabyte Z690 Aorus Extreme. So without further ado, roll that intro. As usual, our motherboard videos are not reviews. They're just overviews so we can take a bit of a look at what's on this board, and there's a lot on this board, and what physically comes in the box with a brand new motherboard. Let's get it unboxed and take a look. Here it is, ladies and gents, the Aorus Z690 Extreme. But let's get the motherboard out of the box so we can take a bit of a closer look at all of the things that come with this motherboard. All right, there it is. Come on, it's a bit heavy. Here we go. All right. First up, we've got this uh, sheet of stickers. I don't know why they still include these with motherboards. I don't know anyone that uses these. Underneath flap number one, let's take a look. We've got the multilingual insulation guide, and this will basically walk you through socketing these new LGA 1700 CPUs from Intel. Then we've got this little Aorus badge. You know the deal with this. Put it on your case, more performance, more power. Just science. There's also a USB stick with all the drivers and everything that you need to get up and running with this board. No more discs, more USB sticks. I like this. There's also the user manual. This will basically walk you through the BIOS and what everything is on the board and how to get up and running and all that jazz as well. We've got the antennas for the built-in Wi-Fi 6E and the Bluetooth as well. There's two separate antennas. It doesn't have a, a single one. There's also some thermal probes that you can use to detect the temperature at certain parts of your case and your system. These are pretty handy for overclocking. There's also this little microphone. This listens and adjusts the fans accordingly. All right, what's underneath flap number two? What do we got here? We've got the front panel breakout. Now, Instead of having regular front panel connectors on the board, there's a breakout cable that has everything on it so you can kind of hide it away when you're building and cable managing. There's also a USB 2.0 breakout cable. USB 2.0 is typically used for AIOs and RGB controls and that kind of stuff these days. Less with front panel stuff on the case itself, so... Yeah, it's there for legacy purposes. There's also the G connector. This is to plug all your wires and all your switches and all your lights and everything in for the front panel connections into a single block, making it easier to connect. There's also this little essential USB DAC. It's a USB type C audio interface or a DAC that is used to isolate any noise that the motherboard could be creating away from the board. This is handy for audiophile purposes. Aorus usually includes this on the higher end boards. There's also some breakout cables for the RGB. It splits a four pin 12 volt RGB header and a five volt three pin RGB header out as well. There's also some screws and standoffs for the four M.2 slots on this board, which we're gonna take a bit of a look at in a moment. There's a set of SATA or SATA cables for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rush drives. These ones are paracord sleeved, so they make them look a little bit nicer than you would usually find your SATA cables. There's also some Velcro straps. This is for cable management and whatnot. You may or may not need this, but it is nice that these are included with the motherboard. And lastly, this little device here. This is a RAM cover, which I'm gonna talk about a little bit later on the video. It's a bit of plastic, it's a bit of RGB, a little bit unnecessary purely for bling purposes only. Anyways, uh, let's get the motherboard out. It's a very, very heavy board, but let's get it out of the way and take a close look at the Z690 Aorus Extreme. But first, let's visit our buddies over at Peel Corp. Look at this satisfying peel. Ooh la la, look at this one. This one is delightful. Look, it's even got some of the pattern on the plastic itself, look at it go. Ooh, you can you can imagine how this sounds, right? So satisfying. What you'll notice is everything on the board is a right angle connector to try and hide as much stuff on the board as possible. So we've got that breakout USB 2.0 header. We've got two PWM fan connectors. We've got that microphone connector so the system can listen to the fan noise for acoustics. There's four SATA or SATA ports for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning RAS drives. There's two USB 3.0 headers. These are right angle connectors. There's also a USB type C header back behind there. There's the headers for the breakout RGB connectors and the breakout front panel connector. There's a 24 pin power connector to send juice to your brand new Z690 Extreme and four 
five PWM fan connectors. On the top of that shield, there's a diagnostic postcode LED screen and a power and a reset button. Also, there's two more PWM fan connectors above the RAM slots and the connectors for the thermal probes next to that. There's also another connector, which we'll talk about in a moment as well. There's two 8-pin EPS power connectors to send juice to your brand new 12th gen Alder Lake CPU and another PWM fan connector. Now, let's take a look at these PCIe slots. So the top slot is a PCIe Gen 5 by 16 slot. The next one down is a PCIe Gen 5 by 8 slot. And that bottom slot is a PCIe Gen 3 by 4 slot. Because this is a Z690 board, it doesn't have any active cooling for the chipset. No board really does. In terms of the VRM layout on this board, it's a 20 plus 1 plus 2 digital direct VRM setup with 105 amp power stages. You'll notice that both of the heat sinks for the VRM cooling are connected via a heat pipe. And you can see that the heat pipe runs all the way through the heat sink on the top of the board. And it also runs all the way through the heat sink where the IO cover is because most of these boards IO covers are basically a heat sink as well. But let's uh, open up that new LGA 1700 socket so we can take a little bit of a look at what's new here. We have talked about this in other motherboard videos, but I thought it'd be a refresher if you haven't watched any of that. So it features Intel's brand new LGA 1700 socket with 1700 contact pins. It's got new hole spacing for cooler mounting as well, and the CPU can only be installed one way. If we flip the board over, you can see that there's a full cover backplate that covers basically everything on the board itself. There's also four DDR5 RAM slots which support up to 128 gigs of DDR5 memory, overclockable up to 6600 mega transfers. There's also this cover that I, I touched on a little bit earlier. This is for RAM and the reason why they've done this from what I can gather is a lot of the DDR5 RAM that's coming out at the moment does not have RGB. So instead of you getting your RGB memory, you have this RGB cover. It, it's easy to install. It's three screws to screw it down. And then it's got a single connector that is next to the top PWM fan connectors to plug in the RGB. And Bob's your uncle and you're ready to go. But let's pull off the heat sinks for the M.2 slot so we can take a look at all of what's going on underneath this massive heat sink that covers almost all of the board. There's four M.2 slots on this board and every single one of these M.2 slots is PCIe Gen 4. The top slot is connected to the CPU and the other three are connected into the chipset itself. You'll notice that the top M.2 slot features this crazily over-engineered heatsink which has some heat pipes on it and it looks like it's actually a VRM heatsink that they've repurposed kind of over the top. As far as re-IO, you've got that ignition button, you've got a Q-Flash button, antenna connectors for the built-in Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth. There's a whole stack of USB 3.2 ports. There's a line out and a microphone jack. There's a SPDIF output for optical and SPDIF output for 7.1 digital surround sound. There is a 2.5 gigabit ethernet interface, a 10 gig ethernet interface, and two Thunderbolt 4 ports, as well as that integrated IO shield. All right, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed this first look and overview of the Gigabyte Z690 Aorus Extreme. As I mentioned, this board is completely overkill. Now, it does a few things that I think are quite bizarre, but I, I kind of get why they do it. So this RAM armor thing that they've made, uh, it could potentially impede the cooling of the RAM, probably not too much, but the reason why they've done this, and this is just from what I can gather, is DDR5 RAM is pretty scarce as it is, right? And the DDR5 RAM kit that Aorus has released, let's, let's say released, doesn't have RGB. So I think what they're trying to do here is for RAM kits that don't have RGB to give them RGB. I think it's a little bit pointless, but at the same time, uh, a bit forward thinking it's yeah this this board in general is completely overkill only to be compared to let's say the uh, Z690 Hero Extreme from Asus I think on paper they're pretty similar motherboards in terms of feature sets but yeah this thing is kind of one of those boards that 
It's cool that it exists, but I don't think very many people are going to buy it. Because if you're interested in getting your hands on the Gigabyte Z690 Aorus Extreme, they're going for around 900 US dollars or around 1500 Australian dollars at the time of filming this video. That is a lot of money for a motherboard. You know, I remember the days when spending $300 on a motherboard was absolutely insane, but 1500, yeah. That's a lot. And this isn't even Gigabyte's most expensive Z690 board, if you can if you can believe that. Because they have the Water Force, which is double the price at 3,000 Australian dollars. So, you know, I think the Glacial board from Asus is around the same amount in Australian dollars as well. So these boards are definitely for people who hate their money. But it, it's, it is cool that they exist. It's cool that for people who have that much money and they want to fully bling out their systems that they can go and do that. One thing I will say though, just while I'm, I'm mentioning this is they've removed the boxes that used to come with the old Extreme boards that have that RGB Fusion 2.0 controller, like the full fan control, like that crazy fan hub thing that they did. I don't know why they did that because those boards were cheaper and I mean, kind of had more functionality in terms of the bling factor, which is the only reason why you would buy this. If I had to pick a board out of Gigabyte's top end lineup for their boards for Z690, I would say the master would be the pinnacle. This is overkill and unnecessary, but very, very cool. I hope I can get my hands on that Asus Extreme board because that'd be like a cool little side by side to do. Anyways guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked this video, smash the like button. If you hated the video, hit the dislike button twice. If you like the music you heard here, I make all the music that's available over on our Patreon. Once again, thank you so very, very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peek, we seek. It's time for some cinematic things so we can take a bit of a cinematic look at this we old board over here. It's not we at all, it's quite big. Let's take a look or not. I don't know. You can leave. It's up to you, but stick around. I put effort into this part. This is this part of the video that I spend the most time on. <laughs>